On the build show today, we're going to be talking about the differences between plywood and OSB sheathing when you're framing a new home. One of the beauties of building a new custom home is that you can make all the decisions on the house. You're not bound by the production builders that only let you choose countertops or maybe fixtures and tile. You can choose everything, including the type of framing that you want to use. On today's video, we're going to take a deep dive into the differences probably between the two most popular sheathing choices for framing on the outside of the house. That's oriented strand board or OSB versus plywood. But before we get into that, let me tell you one of the choices that I'm not going to recommend. Most production builders, not all, but most in this country are sheathing their houses with this. This is a cardboard product. I don't want to tell you the name just to keep the, uh, the innocent honest, but this product is not what you want to use to sheathe your house. I find this to be very air leaky, very hard to waterproof correctly, and certainly it meets code, but it is not your best choice. If you're building a custom home, you're probably like-minded to me. You want to build a durable product that's going to be around for a long time, that's well built, that you're proud of, and that you want to drive by someday with your grandchildren and say, that's the house I built. Look how good it looks. It probably had the kitchen remodeled, but the structure is in great shape. And that's why what we're talking about today, I think, is so important. Because you're going to remodel that house likely in 20 or 30 years, you're probably not going to remodel your sheathing. It's going to be there for a long time. Okay, now before we get into these two choices, let's talk about the history of construction in America. Prior to either one of these coming on the scene, houses in America were built with solid sheathing. That's that shiplap that you've seen Chip and Joanna Gaines made popular on their show. It's used typically on their show inside and it's for looks, but shiplap started as a sheathing product. Houses built prior to World War II were using shiplap on the outside of the house. The builders were bringing them up one board at a time and nailing those on, and that gave sheer value to the house. That's that racking strength and the wind blows against the house to make sure it's not moving or shaking. Now around World War II, that's when plywood came onto the scene. And we had a huge housing boom in America, and plywood was typically used in, I don't know, the couple decades or so after World War II. It was really the only choice and certainly the most popular choice. This is half-inch plywood right here, and this happens to be three-ply plywood. You can also buy plywood in five-eighths. And you're going to see this vary between maybe three to five plies for half-inch and four to seven plies for five-eighths-inch plywood. Now, oriented strand board, this is a newer choice. Oriented strand board was invented in the 60s, but didn't really become popular in American houses, I would say, until about the 80s. My understanding, this is actually about three quarters of the marketplace in America today for custom homes that are using a solid sheathing on the outside of the house. Now, this is a product that's made from small strands of, of actual wood, but this is typically fast growth wood that's been glued and oriented and pressed to make this board right here. You ought to go to the Wikipedia page about uh, oriented strand board. I'll put it in the link below. Very interesting to find out how this is manufactured. This half inch board started as a mat of these strands of wood that's about six inches thick and glue and these little chips are actually pressed with heat together to form this half inch sheet. I built a lot of houses with OSB, a very good structural product. I like how we can solid sheet the house now so we've got a nail base. We've got the ability to put our waterproofing in. It'll take a staple, a very good product. I would consider OSB a minimum for a custom home being built. Okay, next let's talk about cost. OSB is the most used for a reason and it's really cost. This particular sheet in today's dollars, this is being published around the beginning of 2018. This is about $12 a sheet for what I would call commodity OSB. Now there are certainly better grades of OSB. I'm not gonna get into that today, but one of my sponsors, Huber, makes some really impressive grades of OSB. But this is the lowest grade. This is the, the least cost at $12. Now plywood, this is CDX plywood, which is typically used for sheathing. This is about $18 for that same nominal half inch thickness. This is actually 7 16th, and this is 15 30 seconds in total thickness. So we've got about 50% more to go to half-inch plywood compared to half-inch OSB. Now how does that translate into real dollars on a house you might be building? This house being built here by my company, this is about a 7,000 square foot framed house. When I say framed house, I'm including the garage, the porches, all the unheated spaces, not just the heated and cooled. So 7,000 square feet of framed space. 
and we needed about 200 sheets of exterior sheathing on this house. Now, if you relate that to a cost per square foot basis, we're talking about 17 cents per square foot. Not a lot when we're talking about these two choices, but $1,200, that's not nothing. You know, that's, that's more than half my mortgage payment every month. So these are real dollars. Next, let's talk 5 8 inch prices. 5 8 inch OSB is about $20 a sheet in today's market. And 5 8 CDX, which is actually what we used on this house, is about $22. So only $2 in difference between these two products. Again, these are real dollars and it does add up but I want you to know what are the real differences? Why are you gonna pay more for plywood versus just using standard OSB? All right, next let's get into long-term performance. You know, I've remodeled a lot of houses over the years and I've seen problems in houses with both of these. Neither one of these is a panacea to a well-built house, especially if you've got leaks that are happening in your house. Now, for instance, I've remodeled a lot of houses that were post-World War II houses. Those houses, no insulation, very air leaky. I often found big leaks around windows and doors, lots of stains from where water was getting in. But those old houses, because they were very leaky with air, they were energy pigs, they were super energy inefficient, they were also very durable. That solid sheathing and solid two by fours in the house were able to absorb the water. And because air was flowing and heat was flowing through that, they dried out and they didn't have any rot or mold issues. Now, on the other hand, a new house, if you're watching this and you're building a new home, you gotta build that house to today's building codes. And today's codes require a very airtight house that's very well air sealed and very well insulated. So if one of these two gets wet, they're not gonna dry very well. A big reason why you wanna choose a really good weather barrier or waterproofing system for the outside of your house. Now let's talk about small amounts of water. Now if you're using OSB, OSB is less susceptible to small amounts of water and not having problems over time. A famous building scientist, David Nicastro, has a saying, if it can't dry, it's gonna die. And that's the case with OSB. There's a lot of builders that won't use OSB because they've seen problems in remodels. Now on the other hand, plywood has a little bit more ability to absorb some water. Now we're talking small amounts of water, and as long as that small amount of water can dry, plywood will be okay. On the other hand, I've also seen some massive failures on not very old buildings because they got a lot of water on the plywood, and that plywood couldn't dry out, so it rotted out. So neither one of these choices means that you can just use whatever you want on the outside for waterproofing. You really need to pay attention to those details. Okay, so which choice is the right one for you? You can use really either choice. The difference is you've got a little bit, in my mind, more buffer capacity on plywood than you do on OSB, which means that small amounts of leaks, maybe around an unsealed hose bib or a small leak that only happens during a huge storm event but doesn't happen during the rest of the year, you've got a little bit more capacity in that plywood for a small amount of water to get in and not have a problem than you do in OSB. But for either choice, what I've found over the years is that most of the problems happen underneath windows and at the bottom one to two feet of the house. Windows, no matter how good a window you buy, have a tendency to leak over the years and it's usually the first floor that has the most problems because that you've got the least overhang, the most exposure. So no matter which choice you make, you gotta put a sill pan in for your windows and you gotta waterproof those windows correctly. Similarly, at the bottom of the house, I really think you need to take extra precautions where whichever choice you meet meets your foundation. There's several ways you can waterproof that bottom foot of the house. Look for a couple of those in the description below for some links and videos I've made there. But ultimately, either one of these is a great choice for a custom home. It really boils down to how much risk do you wanna take? Can you afford to spend a little bit more on plywood? And are you willing to waterproof that house correctly to make sure that if you choose OSB that it's gonna stay nice and dry for the lifetime? This OSB, if I leave it inside my dining room, is gonna look beautiful in 100 years from now. The same's true with plywood. If we keep them dry, they're gonna be in great shape for the lifetime of the house. But if we don't do a great job on those details, that's when the problems occur. Guys, thanks for joining me. Stay tuned for a future video where actually I'm gonna get into a couple of different options besides these two. Our friends at Huber make some um, higher grades of oriented strand board that really have some neat properties. And we're gonna talk about water absorption and what you need to know with water in houses under construction, specifically in the framing stage. Look for that video in 2018. 
Thanks for joining me, guys. Happy New Year's. Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next time on The Build Show.